I want to share a little bit with you also from a day word. And uh, we will look at Psalm 37. If you can go with me, please. Verse 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not let when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope and wait in the Lord will inherit the land. I have a day with talking about silence, stilter. And I was thinking about that, realizing that's a different word than waiting, than waiting on God. And this scripture is putting it very clear, verse 7, be still before the Lord and wait. So to be still and to wait is two different concepts. In the waiting, I have a certain expectation, I have a certain faith for certain breakthroughs. Hello? In the waiting, let of, a lot of other translations can put the word wait as hope. I hope in the Lord. Even uh, Isaiah where we see we must wait on the Lord and then our strength will be renewed as eagles. That scripture that everybody knows. Uh, many translations, it's not those who wait on the Lord, but those who hope in the Lord. So with the waiting, there's a hope. With the waiting, there's an expectation. With the, with the waiting, there's a faith. But many times, I must first understand how to become still. How to become still. How to become still. I want to use the example of Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. He created. He did one major, 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 major big thing with the whole expanse, with the whole universe. And then, everything was void. Everything was Everything was, there was nothing, there no definition, no clear something that he did. There was nothing except the water that was still and the spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. And the spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. Because there was an expectation. And my brother, my sister, many areas of our lives maybe, we feel there's just nothing happening. And don't fabricate something. Don't stir something to happen. Just ask Holy Spirit. What is happening right now, Lord? Maybe it's the, the moment before the breakthrough. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Just before the first major breakthrough in what he created. Hello? So... There can be a silence, but I can allow certain, I want to say, spirits to dwell with me. I can be in a place, but the spirit hovering over my life could be anxiety. And then I just want to get out of anxiety. Stress, I just want to get out of stress. I just want to get out of the fear. And that thing, that anxiety can be over your life the whole time. That negativity or that depression or that religious thing can be hovering because he's waiting for a voice to say, let there be. And that spirit, that demon, that thing will make sure that it happens. Let there be stress and there will be stress. But that's in a place where I'm not still before the Lord. So my time with him, my waiting on him, my being with the word, my focus on him, my place where I can just not just chill but where I can come into a place where stillness is something that God creates in me 
that the waters can be still so that only the spirit is moving over my life who has been there where you feel nothing is happening in this area of your life there's absolutely nothing happening sometimes you don't even want to pray you don't you know hello so on 37 you know the whole story and nothing is happening about a wife so i i became really still from uh, 37 years old to the eight years old 39 years old i didn't pray for a wife anymore it was really still but then god said let there be wife <laughs> and two weeks later boom after the prophetic word there was wife what i'm saying in that place i cannot allow my heart to become depressed negative fed up frustrated just no you better keep your heart in a place of stillness if you have an expectation that when god's going to speak it's going to be amazing if you believe that bring your life in a place where the still waters talks about an expectation the still waters talks about the fact that i will do nothing unless god says nothing will happen holy spirit is going to do nothing nothing unless god says let there be light so you better wait with the holy spirit wait with the holy spirit and let him hover over you not a negativity because you must keep on waiting and you must and it's not working out and the only thing that you allow over yourself is that type of rubbish the wise virgins the foolish virgins it was all about the waiting what happened in the waiting they had to get the extra oil oil that is always symbolic of the holy spirit fill yourself with more of the holy spirit so that you're not foolish in the day when god is there when god just tomorrow wants to say something when god wants to create in your life when god wants to give you light in your situation when god wants to give you provision breakthroughs wisdom when god wants to give you so many things that he's so ready to give you certain breakthroughs he's so ready that's the scripture we will look at just now he's so ready to help you to give you breakthroughs but he's waiting for you he's waiting for that still waters he's waiting for you to decide i will not do anything unless god said unless god said are you with me are you with me so my brother my sister i pray that you understand when you know god created the heavens and earth god created you god created bring bring brought the rebirth in you you are a reborn child of god yes but after that you keep silent after that you wait on holy spirit even with pentecost they waited they waited in prayer they waited so they waited and then holy spirit <laughs> beginning of the new testament beginning of the old testament everything waited even the holy spirit waited for the father to say let there be let there be and if you learn that principle god created let there be let there be until 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 what he created looked like him and then he rested what he wants to create in you in that area of your life you want to create 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 until it looks like him until you see god is love until you see the love the light the wisdom the way the truth living through you and then he rests but so with every area of your life if you are prepared to understand and have that wisdom not to be a foolish version but a wise version to be sensitive to the spirit to allow the holy spirit to be over your life and no other spirits and and thought patterns and and stress and anxieties and fights with people and this and that and that if you can allow that hello you are so ready for the breakthrough that god's going to send you so ready for that breakthrough just to come through you are still here let it be so and then let god create until he says He's very good.
because it looks like me. The wise virgins, the foolish virgins, they got the oil, but then, and you can go and sleep, no problem. So the virgins, they went to go and sleep and rest. Rest is from the Lord. They went into his peace, but when suddenly he came, they were ready. Whenever suddenly in your day, you are busy with this, or you're in the night, you're busy sleeping, or you're busy with that. But if God suddenly is there, you will just be aware that he's here now. Because of the Holy Spirit and the full, the fullness of the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. You are full of bitterness, immediately you are aware. If that person that you are bitter towards, if he is doing something negative, immediately you are aware of it. And immediately bitterness is awaking you. Rejection is awaking you. You are full of rejection. And when somebody says something negative about you or belittle you, immediately, immediately, that word is awaking you and rejection is alive in you. Are you with me? Now the same with the word of God. If you are filled with the spirit, when God speaks to it, when you hear the word today, when you sit tonight with the word of God, when the word... When you hear the word, immediately something happened in your spirit. Just like bitterness, just like fear. You're full of fear and you hear something of, there's no future, there's no future in the country. Immediately something happens inside of you. Because you're full of fear. And fear is waiting for the word. Let there be. But full of the spirit, waiting on the word of God. And the father says, let there be breakthrough for my son. Let there be provision for my daughter. Let there be healing for my child. If you are filled with the spirit, immediately your spirit, your life reacts. That's what God wants from you. But silence. Tell your flesh to shut up. (laughs) Okay? But get into that place. But in the place of silence, let the word create an expectation so that silence become a waiting on God. Waiting on God. Become silent that all this stuff must go in Jesus' name. And in that place of silence is a focus, more focus, 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 focus on Him. Not focus because of stress, but focus because of a calmness, a tranquility, if I can use that word, that's created inside of you. It's already there in your spirit, but your soul must not bully, must not dominate your spirit. Then you don't understand. Okay, let's go for it. The next, the next one. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Ish. If I'm not giving myself fully to him. In repentance and rest. There's a place of rest. But there's a place of quietness and trust. Is strength. In quietness there's strength. There's strength. Are you with me? It's not like you must just stay calm. But you know. You know these these, uh, little dogs. You know I have two of them. You can come and get it. I'll give you money just to take it. But I can. And then the big dog can sit there. And you know he has the authority. And they can. And the next moment. And the little ones, there they go. But this big, big, big boy. He knows he has the authority. So this, this dog will sit there until he decides this is enough. I've had it. And then there's one boom. And, and they, all these Hwara stuff is gone. <sighs> so when the enemy comes and <laughs> with you and your circumstance and your flesh, <laughs> don't make them the big dog. Don't give him the authority. Hello? Your strength is in so many times just to be quiet. When Jesus, 
he spoke so many things and so many things happened with healings and deliverances and and how to quiet the mouths of the pharisees and the sadducees and and the wisdom and the eternal the words for of salvation for the nations until he come back again and then there was strength in keeping quiet when he revealed himself through gethsemane as the lamb of god not just the son of god just but the lamb of god then the lamb kept quiet and in that there was strength there was authority because it was the will of the father even though they mock even though they will say ha, 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 if you're the son of god come down from the cross you know you could do it this other day but look at you now pathetic the strength was in keeping silent and still in the midst of all of that just hear what the father says and when he saw the father says i forgive them he said father forgive them for they don't know what they do it was not like the father didn't want to forgive them the word says he will only say what he hears the father is saying he saw that his father still will forgive them even how they mock and crucify his son and he revealed the heart of the father because he could hear the voice of the father there was still the strength of silence the strength of stillness the strength of be quiet in his spirit in jesus there's a strength in that my brother please please let us just speak when god says in repentance and rest all right verse 18 yet the lord longs yet the lord longs to be gracious to you he rises to show you compassion for the lord is a god of justice blessed are all who wait for him wait on him and wait for him blessed are you if you understand this principle man especially in a season like this where everything will be shaken more and more and more the temptation to be shaken the temptation to overreact to the temptation to take try and take control of some things that are shaken when something is shaken immediately what do your your hands will do you grab hold of something no uh, not true when things are shaken if you have uh, even maybe if you don't have a brain cell you still you will grab, take hold of something we all have trillions of burning cells you will take hold of something so when everything will be shaken in the nations and everything are shaken all over the place the natural reaction will be not to be stupid but to take hold of something because you're not stupid but the question you will take hold of who or what but it's there the temptation to take hold of anything around you and it will be the thing that you trusted the most it will be the thing that you focused on the most there will be the thing that you felt calm with the most you know some guys in the past some of you uh the smoking oh it calms me you know you know i've heard that many times for decades at Creari. no but it it just calmed. i don't know how i'm gonna get calm you know if i don't get a mess up my lungs then I feel so calm when I mess up my lungs you know okay you had some other freaky faith but you took hold of something but now the thing is will you keep silent will you stand back and say I want to take hold of him alone therefore I will wait on him he is my strength he is my security he is my hope he is my fortress he is my salvation and you speak it forth the whole time like David in the midst of all his chaos at the end of the day this is what he says I will not take hold of anything else I will not take hold of revenge I will not take hold of my anger as a as an authority I will not take hold of all that rubbish I will take hold of him in the midst of whatever chaos is happening around me you are still here the lord longs to be some other translations talking about he's impatient he is ungeduldig the afrikaans he's so ready to help you he's so ready to show his compassion his his ability his grace his enablement he's so ready to give it to you if you can just come into the place of true repentance with quietness 
where the water can be still. Shh. Are you with me? Genesis 1. That's it. Now, also, in the beginning of the New Testament. You know, Malachi, between the last letter and between the birth of Christ, 400 years of silence. 400 years of silence. What on earth is that? Now, quickly, our um, children's church activity. Everybody, you're going to breathe in, and you're going to keep it there until I say release. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> now that, that thing of, that place, you would, those who worked with were focused, were focused on me. Are you with me? Now that 400 years silence was like God wants them to focus on him. What is God saying? Where is God? Where's the prophets? Where's the word? Where's the this? Where's the that? This I we hear nothing. What what is happening? God is like God is holding his breath before his spirit will blow into Mary and the Son of God will be born. Are you with me? And even in the end time, there will be seasons where, but even if you see the shaking and all the other winds and the storms and the shaking and the storm, you are waiting for one breath, and that is from the Holy Spirit, for end time revival. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But you're waiting for that from the Holy Spirit that will come. But are you prepared to keep and not what is happening here and what is happening there and this and this and this and what must we do about this thing and about the earthquakes and about all the wars and the rumors of wars and the, and the currencies and the, and the finances and then no food and global warming and there's not going to be enough food and there's not going to be enough water and this and instead of not out of fear because out of fear you can Silence before the storm. Eh? Still to fully storm. It's actually in nature many times like that. Eh? You've seen that. That's why there's that saying. You've seen that, huh? Sometimes the Bierlochstrahle and thunder and uh, all those stuff happening, and then suddenly it's just that few minutes silence, and then it starts to rain. Who experienced that before? Yeah, yeah. So just before the rain from the Holy Spirit coming down on you, don't be stupid. Don't be a foolish virgin. Don't be a foolish virgin in the time just before he comes. Make sure you are full of the Spirit. Make sure you have the extra oil. Remember what we said 300 times? Extra oil means I don't need it now. You're foolish, then you don't, we only get what you need now. You wise, you spend the extra time with God, extra time in prayer, where logically it's not necessary. It's not necessary for this extra time with God, this extra time in His presence, this extra time with the Word. It's not necessary. If you have that type of lifestyle, you, you're a wise virgin. You're not a fool. The fool is, I'm just going with what I need now. God's going to help you. God's going to help me, I believe, in Jesus' name. Okay, next one. That was Isaiah 30. Now we go for Isaiah 40, and then we go for Isaiah 50. Hallelujah. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Okay, those who hope in the Lord... They will renew their strength. That hope is the waiting. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. What did we say just now? In quietness is your strength. Just the previous scripture. In quietness is your strength. There's authority, there's a strength if you can understand how to wait on the Lord. And it's not waiting on the Lord until you feel, oh, I, I, 
I can do this. God will show you when you need to jump. <laughs> and waiting on the Lord in the jumping of the cliff could still be faith. Because you don't know, am I going to have the strength to rise above the storm like the eagle? So jumping off the cliff is still a miracle, is still a faith step from the place where you are tired, where you were fed up, where you were without strength, you were drained. Now you wait on the Lord. But there will be a time then when Holy Spirit will release you to go and do that you are so comfortable, comfortable in the place of waiting that you are just waiting for the second coming, you know. Not waiting to do with God certain exploits tomorrow, certain breakthroughs that you can bring tomorrow. You still here? May God help you and give you the wisdom so that when you need to step out. You know, we, we are, there's even a, uh, um, to, uh, when Moses wanted to do the thing, ah, and he's his strength and he slaughtered the, the Egyptian, hey? And it was in his strength. And then God had to withdraw him in the waiting not by power not by strength but by my spirit says the lord so in your strength you can kill the egyptian you have the the capacity you have the personality you have the strength you have the ability you have the talents you have the skill but take you away you're gonna you're gonna mess up his plan if you cannot bring that under god's control in a place of stillness holy spirit had all the capacity to do so, so far above in everything that we can think or pray. But he will not do anything. Even though he has the ability. He will wait on that word released from the father's mouth. Hello. So may God help you to keep it there. To keep it there. To keep it there. Not by power, nor by might. So let's keep Moses there. Okay, let's get him a wife. Get him some kids. Let him watch after some sheep. You know, he wants the, or this uh, prince, what? Prince of Egypt, whatever. This high, polite guy in the palace. Now here he is watching sheep. You know, in a small place. And in that place he became comfortable in the waiting. Comfortable in the waiting. So that when God started to speak to him, God had to tune him. In the burning bush. At one stage... When he was moaning, when he was moaning, say, God, not me, this and this. It says in one point, God got angry and he wanted to kill him. Go and read your Bible. <laughs> okay, don't go to that point, okay, in your life. But in the moaning and the groaning and the excuses, in the excuses. Let me give you another excellent plan, Lord. And we don't say, let me give you an excellent plan, Lord. But we just think of excellent plans. And we don't realize we are actually arguing with God that already says something in our heart. But in our reasoning, we are tuning God's plan. You are still here? We are tuning God's plan. We are, and that's where God said, I'm going to kill him. Oh. It was in the tuning and in the moaning and the reasoning that God said, I'm finished now. You not enter Canaan. You will die in the desert for 40 years. I will take the next generation. That's not moaning and groaning about everything. I will take them in. Them in. But you tempted me with how you would talk against me. The last book in the Bible. Last book in the Bible. Old Testament. Before the coming of Jesus. Before the 400 years of silence. It was all of God dealing with the guys that's always arguing. God says this. And then they say. Where did we do that? God says that. And says. Why do you say that we've done that? Now it sounds like. Just reasoning. Just like. We just want to know. Where it happened. Because we cannot see where it happened. <laughs> and that. How does that happen? Not God in a thunderstorm. Then you will obey. But as. Through brothers and sisters. Through people close to you. Through your leaders, through the word, through circumstances, God's going to speak in that. And then you can reason against it. And then the scripture says in Malachi, you weary me with your words. So God says, how you speak the whole time. Deal with that. My day with his silence. 
deal with that that you become silent with expectation that you will wait you need to stop all this arguing all this reasoning stop all of that so that you understand how to wait how to be silent because in 400 years my son will be born on earth God stopped with that expectation because there's nothing more important than what's going to happen now so when somebody is speaking and I'm in the middle of a sentence and I just And even he can, can become uncomfortable, the silence of what is wrong with him, or is he okay, or this or that or that. And suddenly there's a type of a focus into, are you with me? So God is speaking, God is speaking, he sent his prophets and he said, I sent my prophets, you slaughtered them, you killed them. I did this, I did that, I did that. And the last strategy that he put before the birthing of his son on earth, he, he spoke and suddenly in the speaking, Four hundred years. Nothing. When you have experienced that in your life in certain areas, don't get frustrated. Respect God. Become silent before the Lord. Get all the other voices out. Become silent before the Lord. So it's in that place. It's the stillness and the Holy Spirit hover, hovering over that area in your life. And you will see the light the moment God speaks. Amen. Respect him in that man. All right. That's that one. Next one. Now Isaiah 50. Isaiah 30, 40, 50. The sovereign Lord has given me an, an instructed tongue. To know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning. Wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. Some of us must wake up. They say, many people, they stand up. They don't wake up. By means, stand up, maale, word nie wakker nie. Tell your neighbor, you better wake up. Some can sleep more in church than in bed. Go in the rest of the Lord. You know what that, uh, that Domini did? With this one uh, old uh, uncle, I, 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 I told you this before. The old, I mean, then he would start to sleep in the service and then he started to snore. <laughs> and I mean, it was really a problem. But he wants to come to church, but he... So the woman, he said, everybody going to heaven, stay seated. Everybody that's going to burn in hell, stand! Woman <laughs> stands. Domini, I don't know why I'm standing, but me and you, we are standing for the same thing, hey? <laughs> now, uh, all I'm saying is, don't be so asleep that when the enemy just suddenly come on you like a flood, when the enemy comes in like a flood, and the enemy just, the circumstances just scream at you, you, you just respond. Because you are asleep in your slumber. To be still and to be silent is not to sleep in your slumber. If that's the right sentence. Sleep and slumber or sleep in your slumber or slumber in your sleep. I don't know what. Something like that. So, are you with me? That's being foolish. Guys, we cannot just cruise like this. And when you hear the word, you teach yourself, like today. You teach yourself how to hear the word and how to respond. How to let the word pass you by. You're teaching yourself and when you walk out here, Satan is so excited you were here at the service. Because you taught yourself how to ignore the word more and more and more. Hell hopes that you have time with the word tonight where you read and you're not interested. You're just reading so that you can train yourself not to respond to the word at all. So you can train yourself how not to respond to the word. And the devil can be so excited <laughs> that you have your time. You can sit here and you have your reasoning. And Satan is so excited that you were forced, a leader or steering, to be in the service. And that you didn't open your heart. Because the more you hear the word and you choose not to respond, not to interact, interact with the word. Let the word work in you and you work with the word. And you don't allow the interaction. The more. The word will not touch you at all. 
the more you will be touched by other words. Today, you choose not let the word touch you. Tomorrow, the other words will touch you more. It will have more authority in your life. Tomorrow, the lust, the temptation, the negativity, the depression, the anxiety must have and will have more authority. Because you gave that rubbish more authority today. How? Because you chose not to honor God's word and interact with his word. So tomorrow you will interact with other spirits. Because you decided not to interact with the Holy Spirit. Huh. It's not a cheap gospel. It's for free, but it's not cheap. And you can teach yourself, like today, like we're talking now, how to make this cheap. You can sit there wherever. And you teach yourself how the word of God must be cheap in your life. Because if it's valuable, you will respect it and you will take it and you will interact with it. You will allow the Holy Spirit to make it a reality. Amen. He wakens me morning by morning. Why? Why? Only me sometimes. It would happen that in the morning you are wakened and become awoken by a spirit of stress. Or spirit of all these things that must happen and all this stuff that must, instead of being woken up by the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. It cannot happen like that anymore. I must start to get that lifestyle that when I wake up in the night, I must know it's only because the Holy Spirit is waking me up. Because no other demon will be allowed to wake me up because I'm dealing with that rubbish and that voices in the day. So they cannot come in my subconscious. They cannot come in my dream world. They cannot come... Hello, in my heart, because I didn't uh, interact with them, and that, that their voice will be alive in me in the day. So tonight when I sleep, their voice is not sleeping. The devil, the demon is not going to sleep. He's going to try to wake you up, man. With that voice of anxiety or stress or compromise or superiority or just self-justification and whatever rubbish you want to hear in the day. Whatever voice you keep alive in you. That voice will wake you up in the night. That voice will wake you up in the night. So get this word. That the word will be alive. Dwelling richly in you. So that when you wake up in the middle of the night. You know God wants to speak to me. The devil don't want to wake you up. Because he knows you're going to spend time with God. <laughs> He knows you're going to pray. You're going to declare his word. You're going to enjoy his word. You're going to believe his word. You're going to go with that. Eugene, where's your wife? And your two, three, four children. Welcome here from Austria. Back from Austria. And the Russians, they are not eating uh, uh, food there at the, at the coffee shop. They are yeah, they're getting translation there. All the Russians, just welcome. They came last Sunday, passionate with God, and uh, yeah, blessing to have them here. Okay, where were we? Yeah, the word dwell richly. Remember to get your cappuccino on my account. Okay, what are we saying? The word will be alive in you that you have intimate relationship with. You. The word that is valuable, you put it in your heart as precious. That's what you think about the most. Oh, there's no future in the country. There's no this, there's no that, there's no that. Okay, so you must wait for opportunity. You wait for opportunity, it's okay. Oh, I wait for opportunity for a good job, for a new work, for a this, for a that, for a that. Okay, wait on the opportunity instead of waiting on God. Because devil and hell can give you opportunities, man. When he knows how you will get busy and forget about God. And how you will get success. And you will get this and you will get that. And he know he will destroy you. He's excited. So hell can organize the open door. You waiting for the open door? Oh, man. There's quite a few that the devil can organize. Very professional. In a very professional way. Not in a bad way. Come on. when you wait on God he is the door 
And when you go through that door into the place where he is, into that excellent dream, that excellent future, the vision that he has for you, that he is excited about. Oh, come on, man. But to see that door, you need to wait, wait, wait on him. And you will have strength. You will have strength. Previous verse, previous chapter you will have strength why did jesus do when it was time for the ministry he's the son of god man come on why must he go and wait for 40 days fasting and in that time of fasting he was tempted by the devil but a time to become silent he went luke 4 i think it was 1 and 14 something like that verse 1 said he went into in full of the spirit into the desert when he came out he says he came out in the power of the holy spirit you can be full of the spirit it's okay but you must understand how the holy spirit's power and his energy must flow through you as you become strong in quietness is your strength wait on the lord you will renew your strength this strength go in the fullness of the holy spirit jesus christ and he came out in the power of the holy spirit if he needs that how thousand times more you and me may we respect what god is saying in all of this i think that's it hmm? okay we spoke about that one we spoke about that one so i want to leave you with that